G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Drive Day. Uh, today what we're doing is we're doing a bit of car shopping. So a lot of you may know I also work for Domino's Pizza. Um, and what we're doing at the moment is buying some company vehicles to add to our fleet. It saves us a lot of money over the course of a year if we provide our own vehicles for our drivers to drive. Uh, it keeps our mileage costs down and then obviously it allows us to spend money in other areas of our business like building new stores and refurbishing stores and buying new equipment and stuff. So now we're here at the A1 Fruit Market uh, looking at a 2004 Honda Jazz that was advertised on Gumtree. Uh, the gentleman's asking best part of $5,000 for it, 4,950. Uh, it's got 110,000 kilometers on the clock. Uh, the red book value on this car is from 4,000 to $5,000. So it's been advertised at a pretty high end of the, uh, of the price point, of the price scale. So we're just waiting for him to arrive now. We'll have a quick look at the car, check out a few things, and we'll decide if this vehicle is going to be right for us. Don't really want to pay the full asking price of $5,000. It's a bit high for this vehicle. So hopefully we can get it for below four and a half. I reckon four and a half is going to be my, no, probably even lower. Probably like three, 4,300 is probably going to be as much as I want to pay for this vehicle. So uh, we'll make this guy an offer if everything checks out and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so that car went uh, really well. It drove really nicely. Uh, everything I checked in the car was in really good condition. Uh, the tyres will need to be replaced shortly. The front tyres need to be replaced almost immediately. Um, and the rear tyres probably in maybe another three or 4,000 kilometres. So I used that um, in my negotiating of the price. I was able to get the price that I wanted to have 4,300. Moving on to the next car now. I think we're heading into North Hobart to go and look at a... Ford Focus, all right, cool. So, Xavier, let's give Xavier a call and we'll head in to see him. Cool, so we just uh, drove Xavier's uh, Ford Focus. Uh, the car runs really well, it pretty much behaves exactly the way all our other ones, all our other Ford Focus, Focuses behave. Um, it's got a slight rattle in the door. It just sounds like there's something loose in the window mechanism. Not a big deal. Uh, all the tyres are in great condition. Uh, the service is up to date. Um, ran around all four corners of the car. Didn't hear any knocks or rattles in the suspension while driving. CVs are all in good shape as well. Um, oil and so on, all really good colours. Uh, checked all the fluids. They were all really good. Um, Xavier accepted an offer for $2,400, so I was able to get another 350 bucks off the price there. So uh, I feel that's like a really, really good buy for that vehicle. Alright guys, I'm taking this Getz for a spin. Um, I'm a concerned about this one. It's not in great condition. If you have a quick look here at this dipstick, this oil is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is fucking black. I'm having a closer look. Even these rear tyres need to be replaced. If you have a look at them, see these weather cracks through them? They're just gonna fall apart. They have no life in them whatsoever. The car's obviously been sitting for a very long time. So, hopefully I just wanna get rid of it and I can get a really good price for the car. I wanna get this one really cheap. Most of the cars I look at, I pretty much make the decision then and there whether I'm going to buy them. I don't bother too much with uh, like workshop inspections before I pick the car, before I buy the car, because I mean these cheap cars, most of the little problems I can find and tend to myself. But uh, when one is like got oil like this and no service records, it's a really dangerous one to go and buy. So maybe perhaps I'll get this one looked at uh, by a service centre first. It only costs us like 40 bucks and they'll just check everything. They know, they're mechanics, they know more than I do. But um, it just gives us more peace of mind when buying these cars. I'm gonna give the boss a quick ring about uh, this one because at the end of the day, it's his money. I mean, this car's probably still a very good car. It's just gonna need some cash spent on it. So I'll see if he's happy to buy this for a cheap price. And then obviously, four new tires, big service and so on. But everything else in the car is pretty good. So we'll see how we go. We are a fan of these Getzers. We've had a lot of these. Hey mate, how you doing? Yeah, right. I'm down in Midway Point at the moment with this uh, with a Getz. They've got 3700 on it. Um, 
it's there was a lady's mother's car and it's been sitting in the shed for quite some time um the all the oil is really dirty it hasn't been serviced in quite some time and all the tires the tires are like 80 percent wear but they're all weathered and cracked and ruined like it's still a really good car but it need it's gonna need like five six hundred bucks spent on it straight away so like i think it's still a good car that we could potentially buy but i want to get it for like three grand because we have to spend money on it straight away it's only got ninety five thousand k's on it that's not gonna have any issues because it hasn't been looked after um i don't think so like it's they've owned it since new it was owned by a mother a mother's passed away um, they've got other cars. It's just been sitting for so long. Like the tires are completely split and ruined, just full yeah. of cracks and stuff. So they don't need to be replaced. It needs a big service. Get it out by a first. Yeah, that's what I reckon. So I reckon if we get this one, I'd like to get it still, but I think it needs a pre inspection. Yeah. Just yeah, to be sure. Cool yeah. yeah, all right. Well, um, I'll talk to them about a, wanting to pay obviously less for it to do all this work, and then I'll tell them I want to get a pre inspection as well. And um, I'll make a decision on it probably Monday morning. Yeah, cool. All right, I'll uh, take it back to them and let them know my decision. Yeah, cool. All right, right. thanks, Mark. Alrighty. See ya. Yeah, sure. Okay, guys, we're back down here at Midway Point. Uh, I got a quick call last night from the lady who was selling the Hyundai Gets that we were um, a bit unsure about. She was happy to accept the offer I gave, uh, which was three thousand um, dollars. Their advertised price was $3,700, but like I said, I still need to put tyres on this car. It needs to have a full service. Um, and I'm still going to get it checked with a pre-purchase inspection. So I'm about to pick the car up now, take it down to a uh, mechanics workshop in Sorrel here, and I'll get the car checked over. As long as everything checks out, there's nothing else wrong with the car other than it needs tyres and a good service. Um, we'll be quite happy to go ahead and buy that car. Alright guys, so we've got the uh, Gets and we're just going to take it down to a uh, service centre in Sorrel. It's only about 10 minutes down the road. But while we're uh, here, I'll take you guys through a few things that I do on a test drive when uh, purchasing these vehicles. So one of the simplest things you want to do is make sure the car is accelerating, braking, turning as it should. So, I mean, a lot of people don't drive their cars pretty hard or don't take them up past three or four thousand revs um, I definitely do and it's how you work out if a car is performing and making power the way it should so uh, we're we'll on the causeway and we'll uh, give it a bit of beans and uh, give the brakes and we'll probably do it right here power well. I've seen the gearbox seems a little bit sluggish to change at high revs but um, I mean it's a 1.6 litre uh, automatic two-door gets. They're not designed to have a quick change in them but uh, it didn't seem to have any issues there. And also when I was braking there was no shuttering so there was no vibration through the wheel. Uh, the wheel didn't pull off in any serious direction when I braked so it appears that the brakes are in good shape, the rotors aren't warped um, or due for replacing anytime soon from what I can tell from that. I mean, we'll get a better idea when we get the wheels off and have a look at it down here at the workshop. Another thing you want to do when you buy these front wheel drive cars, uh, we'll duck down this nose through road so we've got some room. Uh, you want to always test out your CV joints. So the CV joints um, is what the power trans it goes so you also want to do is check out your CV joints in these cars, especially these little front wheel drives. The way you do that, you just go full lock and go in a circle. Um, if there's any damaged CVs, you'll hear them start to knock or tick and click and they'll make a very distinct noise, you won't be able to miss it. That way's fine. Left hand down now. Again, nothing's clicking there at all. That's perfectly fine. We'll just do these brake test again. Yeah, the car stops really well. Uh, handbrake, see how much tension's in it? Whew. No tension in that handbrake. That's no big deal. Um, like I said, the car's gone a while between service. So I was just sitting here having my lunch, guys, and I was checking out the service history. 
Um, when you're buying second-hand cars, there's generally always a package like this in the glove console, and it has the owner's manual, the purchase details, and pretty much any vehicle documents that people have, they usually leave in their cars, like rego papers and receipts for work done on their vehicle. Um, I did say to you guys, I think this car's got a long time between services, and I was just having a look at the service history in here now, and it doesn't look very good for service history. So these are to be serviced every 7,500 to 10,000 Ks, and the last recorded service was at 28,082 kilometers. The car's currently got 95,162. If these, car, if these books are in the glove box when you take your car to the mechanic, the mechanic will always pull them out and fill out the service details. So this car has potentially gone what? Uh, 67,000 kilometers between services. Um, yeah, so if it's done 67,000 kilometers, I'd be very shocked. Maybe it's been serviced by like a family member or they've just changed the oil and the filter, but yeah, there's no other history in here. So I've just picked up the uh, gets back from the service center, guys. I'm really pleased with that inspection done because the mechanic there is just pretty much said don't buy the car. So, like I said, the, in the logbook, there's only a service recorded at 28,000 Ks. And the mechanic reckons that could very well possibly possibly have been the last time the vehicle was truly serviced. So the oil was that dark and he said when he uh, had a good look it's all thick and gooey and it's like leaving a gooey residue on the bottom of the dipstick. Um, there's no evidence to suggest that the timing's been done on this car, so at 90,000 kilometers I need to have the timing belts replaced. And there's absolutely no evidence to suggest that's been done either. Um, so he told me that the ECN8 Getzers are prone to doing lifters, um, which is like a section in the top of your motor um, that works in time with all your valves and so on, or your camshafts. So um, having really thick, dirty oil also can cause oil starvation, where you can't get oil going through all the uh, little oil jets to lubricate your engine properly. So it's going to be a very high chance this car is going to need a set of lifters put in it soon and they're obviously really expensive and it's a really time consuming job on labour. So we've paid $55 to go and get a pre-purchase inspection done but uh, it's probably safe as $3,000 because this car, even though it appears pretty good on the surface, um, it is an absolute lemon. So I'm just going to drop this back off to uh, the owners and I just let them know politely that it's not really going to be a vehicle for us. So you got to do this sometimes guys, you can't just grab every car you see or think everything's okay on the surface or just because it drives well at the time doesn't mean it's going to be uh, mechanically good in the future. So definitely worth paying the money to go get a pre-purchase inspection done. Those guys are able to tell me way more than I'd ever be able to work out by myself just driving and looking at the car. So it's 55 bucks well spent and hopefully we've uh, dodged a bullet. So uh, we'll go pick up the other cars this afternoon and yeah I'll show you those once we grab them. So these are the two cars we picked up today guys, we've got the 2004 Honda Jazz, which we paid uh, $4,300 for, which is a really good price for that vehicle, and we've got the 2008 Nissan Tita here as well, so we paid $4,000 for that one. Um, we're going to get these vehicles on the road straight away tonight, uh, we had them transferred into the company name, and they're all insured now, so we'll get them on the road. These vehicles are going to save us anywhere between $300 to $600 uh, per vehicle per week. So I really keep a lot of uh, lot of dollars off our uh, on our mileage on our sales sheets.